here's a small lesson for you. Um, it's how to make a pretty buttonhole in our Bonina software. I did have this lesson or a similar lesson on my site previously, but after I redesigned the site, um, I removed that lesson and I thought I'd just recreate it now for you again. In version 6, um, we haven't got it here in the UK just yet, but it's coming very shortly, but I know the US have got version 6. Once you've made your buttonholes, there's now an option where you'll be able to space your buttonholes evenly very quickly. So that if you're making a series of buttonholes for the front of a blouse or whatever item or garment you're making, you'll be able to space them out very evenly and very quickly. So how did I make this buttonhole? Well, first of all, let me bring up a new page. And the first thing I want to remind you about is the display setup. This is so important. And if you've had to reinstall your software at any time, or maybe you're installing it on a, a new computer, please do remember to calibrate your screen. By that, you get a plastic or wooden ruler, not a metal one, a plastic or wooden one, and you measure from the very outside edge to the outside edge and type those millimeter measurements in. And then you do the same for the top to the bottom and type in the height. And then you press OK. And the reason is you must do that because if you haven't calibrated your screen, your uh, designs could become out larger or smaller than you anticipated. So this will make sure that you get the correct size. The size you see on the screen will be the size your machine will sew out. OK. Now, the next thing to do is to choose the closed object tool. And starting here, I'm going to do a left click, and all my clicks from now on will be left click. So these are the left mouse button. And if you hold down your control key, you can get nice straight lines because it will snap them to the grid. You don't need to go to here to finish off this shape. You just hit enter now. And because the software is clever, um, it will finish the shape for you. It knows what the shape is going to be. Isn't that marvellous? Now, I've still got it selected, as you'll see by these grab handles here, these little black squares. So that means I can now go in and choose the colour I would like. And if I click off, you'll see it's reverted back to the green. So choose the blue again, and every object we make now, these are objects, um, will be in the colour that we've chosen. Now we've got to that part, what we need to do is change this fill to a, a fancy, so we can either do it by going to black work fill, because that's the one I'm going to use, or going up to here and bringing up the object properties and choosing it there, or right-clicking on it and choosing it there, or going to Object Properties and choosing it there. These three, this one, this one under here, and right-clicking will always bring up your Object Properties box, and you choose the way you find to work most comfortably. But for now, I'll just go here and use Black Work. Now I do need to right click or bring up my object properties because I need to go and select the design I want to use. And as you saw, I'm using black work fill, which I thought was quite pretty. And I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to say apply. When you say apply, you can have a look at it on the screen. Anytime you make a change, you can apply it and look at it on the screen. If you don't like it, you can go back and alter things in here or just press cancel. So let me look at this closer up. Now you can zoom in with the zoom tool that way or on your keyboard 
you've got some function keys at the top and they're the F1, F2, F3 and so on on your keyboard. If you press F3, your zoom factor box will come up and you can type in or alt change here the number you'd like to zoom into. I'm going to say OK to 3. And if you look down here, the zoom, the Z, is at 3. That always tells you how much you're zoomed in by. Well, as you can see, this looks pretty even. And so we could leave it. But let me just show you how you can alter things. You go into Layout. This square here is selected. And you can alter the size by pulling it or pushing it in. You can move it up and down. The same with this one. You can move it up and down. And this one will go backwards and forwards. So you can widen the spaces in between. But as I say, this one looks fairly even. So we'll just go with that for now. And you just hit your enter button to change it. Now, while it's still selected, and we know it's selected because we can see these grab handles. Well, the other thing I forgot to tell you was you can also, by clicking on an, one of these again, you can swivel these objects around like that. And I'm going to leave, go back to leave it how it was. That's better. Undo buttons are marvellous. Let's just do the undo button. That's it. And now I'm going to select it and I'm going to do a control D on my keyboard. Now that's duplicated it. And if I go down to here, that duplicate becomes an outline. And if I change the colour for you, you'll, you'll see that it is. You see? So I've now outlined it, and while it's still selected, I can use Backstitch, which will make a nice finished edge. You can use Satin if you want, if you want to see what that looks like. That may be a bit too thick, so here again, I'm right-clicking to bring up the object properties, and I can change things here. I could say, make that... Um, just two millimeters wide but I'm going to go back because it may look more dainty this stitch now we need to put our buttonhole in so you just click off of there up to arrange add buttonhole and here I've got a square one, and I'm just positioning it as closely as possible so that it matches. And then I hit my escape key to get rid of, we don't want another buttonhole. And while that's still selected, I can remove the overlaps. But before I do that, I just want to check. Now, if you bring up... If you right click again, object properties or um, this button here or under settings, you can choose the type of buttonhole you want. So let's choose this one and say apply. I don't care for that one very much. I think I'll keep to this one. Let me right click again. You can have the slit length different. The beads, that's the satin. The beading, let me just pull this over a little bit more so you can see. The bead spacing is here, so that would open up the zigzag here. On You can have it vertical or horizontal. If I click apply, you'll see what happens. You see it's gone that way, but I'll go back and apply it there. And you can choose from these buttonholes too. If I click apply, you'll see and that doesn't look very good. Or this one. So you choose the one that you feel is the one for you. And then say OK. And then you have some arrow keys in your keyboard. Now we're just going to refine this a little bit more. You'll see the centre line is nearer this side than that side. So with your arrow keys and the buttonhole selected, just... 
I use my left arrow key there and it you can use those for very small increments the top and bottom I'm just going to use that one and that just moves it up enough okay now I can say remove overlaps and now you can see that, that center stitching has been removed and that is how you can make a very pretty buttonhole